Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Nerd Herb Comic Book Club. This is episode 21, and if you're joining us for the first time, we are a book club for people who like to read comics, and every week we take a different story arc or a volume. We all read along together, and then we meet via a, a live stream on Facebook and YouTube to discuss that book and pick it apart and give it a little review. That is what we do here. If you are watching or listening, wherever you are, there will be a link in your description. If you hit that, it should take you to all the, the socials and the podcast and stuff if you want to have a look at that. There you go. This week, we are reading Ta -da! House of M Ooh. from 2005 by Marvel. And this, of course, was written by Brian Michael Bendis, and the art was by Olivia Koipel. I hope I pronounced that properly. I've probably butchered it. But that is what we are reading. And as always, I am joined by the three desperados from the comic book community. They are probably wanted in numerous countries around the world, probably for something really shit like stealing bags on boards. But those people are Phil from Phil's Nerdiverse on YouTube. Hey, everyone. How are you? We have Shane from Dawn of Comics on YouTube. What's up? <laughs> And we have Scott from Scott Shelf on YouTube too. Shamai, everyone, how are you doing? Shamai, we haven't had a Shamai for ages, have we? Oh, I'd bring him back. Oh, excellent, man. How are we? We good? I'm good. All good. Good week, Scott. You're tired, aren't you, this week? I'm very tired. Up early for work this week, but you know, you know, that's life. That's life. I'm still here. You mean you mean YouTube isn't your full time job? It feels like it sometimes. <laughs> well, it's awesome people are right, yeah, feels like it. <laughs> All right, okay, let's have a look, see who's joining us and participating in helping us pick apart House of M this week. Uh, we have Tom from This Month in Movies, evening, you bunch of nerds, hashtag no more mutants. <laughs> That's good. We have uh, TB Collects, what's up, everybody? We've got your friend, my friend, everybody's friend, Liam Cartwright. Hello, everyone. Just scrolling on down here, we have our man from California. Hey, oh, Southern California chicken in, Sith Lordly. How are you, my friend? Uh, we've got Firehawk. Firehawk's here. How are you, mate? Hope you're well. Uh, scrolling on down, just I don't, I, I really don't want to miss a Phil, you're in here. It freaks me out again when no one's in there. <laughs> Sparks Comics. What's up, everybody? How do you do, Sparks? How are you, how are you, mate? We have Shane, your brother's here again. He's come to cause some trouble. Auntie Phil gets a great in there, Phil. Nope. And we also have Shane. You're in here too. You're all, you're all okay. lurking around in, in the wow. chat here. I'm not. I'm representing Facebook. I am. <laughs> we got Captain Comics. Ahoy, mates and mermaids. Hello, hey. Captain. Uh, Samuel Taylor, just in time, sneaks in. How are you, mate? Uh, Comic Bound, I made it. Hey, guys, happy to finally catch this from the start. I hope you're all doing good. Well, we are very well. Scott's tired, as he said, but I think we're all doing uh, You say it more than me. <laughs> we're all doing very good. I'm just letting people know how hard you work, mate. That, that's that's what I'm doing. You know, you do work hard. You're a hard working yeah. man. Thanks. You know, own it. Be proud. Thanks. I am. Where, where Shane and I clearly are not. <laughs> well, I, I'm not even making you a comment hard. about me. I've worked through this entire <laughs> pandemic. Thank you very much. So, I, I, I am also a key worker, but well, not. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Right. There we go, folks. As usual, we're going to need a synopsis, a little introduction into the House of N, and seen as uh, Philippe, uh, House of P, my guy. Oh, do you know what? No, I've just realised what mine means. Oh, my word. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, yeah. She, she, hey, you want the D, you come to this house, baby. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. I, we should have bought this yeah. out, really, shouldn't we? <laughs> right, Phil, you chose the book. It's your turn to do the synopsis, buddy. Tell us about House of N. Well, this book is obviously very relevant. Why well, I think it was relevant, get, given WandaVision currently going on on Disney+. Plus. So this essentially is uh, Wanda Maximoff. Maximoff? Uh, yeah. Scarlet Witch uh, has <laughs> lost her marbles and is clearly a huge threat to the world. Uh, so the X-Men and the Avengers, who have their differences, but they uh, come together to see what to do with her. Um, and it kind of looks like they may have to destroy her, to end her. So uh, Wanda's brother, Quicksilver, uh, basically takes her out of that situ situation. And then it just transpires that they're, they're now living in an alternate world where clearly the Scarlet Witch has flipped things. The mutants are the dominant species in the world and human or sapiens are the minority uh, because she granted everyone the wish they wanted and that being 
uh, Magneto's wish to be King Magnus or whatever he was called. Mm. So yeah, it's about basically trying to discover what went on and try to unravel all of that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and I will say, I don't, the only thing I'll add there as well is, um, before we get into it, uh, I think this is one of those books, similar to the uh, the Jane Foster run on Thor, like this, you feel when you're reading this, you're in the middle of something um, that you may have missed out on previously. So just to put a bit of context in there, this, this goes back from when Wanda was forced to blip out the children because they were manifestations of Mephisto. She remembers in the, the previous run, Avengers Assem uh, Disassembled, where she wipes out the Avengers team. And then off the back of that, we get House of M. That's where this picks up Magneto, whisks Scarlet Witch away before any repercussions, takes her to Xavier, hoping that he can help her. And then that's where this picks up. So that's just a bit of context for people there. Because I think, Shane, you'd said earlier, right? You, know, you definitely get a sense like you're missing something before with this, with the, when you're reading like the trade or something. All right, so there you go, a bit of context. So Shane, over to you, buddy. The kicks off me. Art first. Yeah, wherever you want to start. Um, the covers, I'm not a fan of the covers, but the insides are pretty. Oh, I love the inside. You, you, you're not a fan of Isad Rivik, though, are you? And he's the guy that did all the covers on this, the same dude that yeah. did the Thor stuff. I don't like the colors. I don't like the composition. I don't like the faces. I don't like anything about any of the covers whatsoever, personally. I'm with you there. I'm with you there, mate. The insides were so pretty. I was so grateful. I was I was worried. When I saw the cover, I was like, oh, please don't look like this inside. I can't do this again. I went through it with Thor. I can't go through it again. But no, I think the insides are lovely. I was so impressed. Really? I think I'd, I'd, I'd mentioned last week that it was Isad Ribic was the same artist from Thor was doing this one. I hadn't realized he's just doing the covers. Yeah. So I'm oh, sure yeah. you, were, you were pretty thankful of that. Yeah, I thought that's what you meant. I thought you, you, you that's what you were referring to. No, because the, 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 yeah, the covers, let's not talk about those. The inside is a fantastic, <laughs> especially when they're reading the newspaper and you've got the picture of Quicksilver and this Marvel on there. Yeah. That was, oh, that was blinding. Yeah. I, I have to say, like, I, I was a big fan of the art. East. It seemed to me, though, to kind of like, it went, I wouldn't say it was bad, like, none of it was bad, right? So I'm not going to go down that road with you. But it seemed very kind of atypical of the time around that kind of like early 2000s artwork. It ranged from that to absolutely brilliant in some of the, the way that the designs of the panels were, were, were laid out. Wasn't there mm. one in particular where we were talking about it earlier, weren't we, with the, that little one cut off at the bottom of the page? Oh, in the yeah. trade? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, it's not. Well, I had it in my... In my I, had, well. I had sent the picture to you guys. It was whenever the, the X-Men were meeting at the Avengers Tower. Mm. I think it was the first issue. And uh, was it Cyclops? Um, uh, Wolverine and... Wolverine. I have it here. But, like, you couldn't... Like, it's completely cut off. At the bottom, yeah. I think See, that, to me, that looks intentional. But like, I didn't. No, know, in, I, in, in, the, I I read the single issues digitally, and that's not cut off. In, in oh, my eyes, so oh. I I checked it after you guys had, had mentioned it, and there is more underneath that from the image you sent me. Is this a bootleg? That's a bootleg graphic novel. What about what I got this from? Because <laughs> I Maybe. didn't know. Did, did print out from a car boot. Phil said. I, I did actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, Shane, what was that? You didn't realise until... I, I, didn't, I didn't know Wolverine was in that panel until Phil mentioned it in the message. And he's like, you can't see Wolverine. Me. And I went back little... and I, I honestly didn't notice he's the top of his head. Uh, I just read oh, the panel and did. moved on. A few people yeah. have this issue. Like in the comments, a few people have said they had it as yeah. well. I was just going to say, let's visit the comments. So uh, yeah. Liam is saying, would you rather Sextillion or House of D? House of D. Tough House choice, D. man. <laughs> easy choice, super easy choice. I'm flattered. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, we have here, I'm just having a look. We've got Comic Band here saying, oh, man, he loves Ribic. Uh, we've got TB Collect saying covers were kind of boring. Uh, TB's yeah. uh, aligned with you there, Shane, I think. Uh, and we've got Comic Band saying, I haven't seen the covers for this, but loved Ribic in Silver Surfer Requiem. That was gorgeous. Great book. Uh, have you read that one, Phil? Yes. Ooh, and we're gonna okay. we're gonna cover yeah. it one, one day. See, I need to get on silver surface though. That's that's a dude I am lacking on uh, on knowledge, man. So 
just having a look down here, Liam is saying, I saw that on my digital copy and thought it was an error. So happy to know it's not just me. There we go. Yeah, so it looks like a, a there, few people. There, were, were, there were a few other spots throughout the book that was like that. I can't think where because it wasn't maybe as, as kind of noticeable, but there were a few other parts where I'm thinking there was something missing in the page and it just seemed to jump. Oh, so it was more than just that one incident then? I, I think so, unless maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I think there was parts kind of missing with that kind of way that it was cut off. It's got to okay. be a trade issue then, because I had the digital trade, and if mm -hmm. Dean has the digital single issues, then they're fine, so it must be an issue with the digital trade and the physical trade. Mm. Yeah, I read it in single issues, and there was, it wasn't, I mean, it isn't a complete full, you know, body thing in there, but there was more to it than what you guys had sent me on that image. Right. Um, Bill is here as well. Howdy, Bill. Hope you're doing well, mate. Um, so, yeah, I uh, yeah, that it is a strange one. Uh, we've got Comic Deal here saying, uh, I went to read this story, but I may have got the wrong one. Uh, it didn't melt in my hands, but it did melt in my mouth. Picked up House of M&M's. Hey, he started. <laughs> like, he's here. I, feel like, like, I feel like it's one of those, uh, you're reading it, and you think, oh, okay, maybe you did get the wrong. Ah, uh, right, okay. <laughs> There's it's, the punch, it's, it's, it's he's, he's on form comedy. tonight. It's James, you know, Riley, he's never going to be sincere. And he was always going to have a softening, the, you know, a joke of yeah. some sort. Well, what Sorry. I will say about the, uh, the artwork here is, is that, um, especially the colouring, uh, I found it fitted the mood of the book. Yeah. Because, like, this kind of flitted around, didn't it, between being kind of like quite action heavy at points to really kind of sombre, sad, heartbreaking a little bit in moments like that. And I thought the colours. Um, and the art really reflected that. I definitely got some impact out of that for me, like emotively. I don't know. Did you guys feel that? Or I enjoyed it. Yeah, I I like the art. It was nice. The thing, the, the thing about the art, which kind of annoys me slightly, whenever we're obviously reading these books, we're looking now for panels to send the show on on the show type thing. There was mm. nothing spectacular. An art. It was lovely. Really? It was great. But I don't yeah. I didn't think there was anything like stood out, like a real spectacular panel or you know, double even, even the Quicksilver and the Miss Marvel on the newspaper. I mean that panel, the the way it was drawn, it was like pic it was like a picture. It was so well. Oh, it was, great. Yeah. Like, it was all really it. lovely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I I disagree. There were some real standout uh panels and stuff there for me. Let's take a look at some Phil. Let's have a look at yours first, mate. Let's uh Let's uh, show people a, a little example of House of Hem, those that haven't read it. Uh, I think that one's yours. Yeah? All right? Yeah, and again, it's not so much the art. Again, the art's nice. It is lovely art. It's not spectacular. The reason why I picked this page was purely because I loved the way, like, some of the heroes were kind of uh, regaining their memories. And in this instant, Logan or Wolverine being the first, because he obviously regenerates and heals. So he's able to kind of, like, remember everything straight from the off without having to be, like, uh, Emma Frost didn't help him for example, he just done that myself. So I love the way, and uh, there is another page to this as well, where it kind of just highlights all the things that Wolverine's been through um, mm. over the years and how he's getting his memories back to, to how he should be in the real world. And it's him yeah. who discovers that we are not, this the world we're in now is not. As yeah, because he, I mean, the only reason he doesn't essentially have his mind wiped by it is because he's been mind wiped so many times, hasn't he? That's how they explain yeah. it in this book. Yeah. Um, so, like at this point, I think he doesn't even remember who, where he's from, or anything like that. Is that right? If I remember, yeah, he, do, he, he doesn't. Rem yeah, he doesn't remember how he got how he was type thing and yeah. his parents and stuff like that. And that's why I love this as well because he find he realizes that's why it's wrong because he shouldn't know who his family was. He does. He's not meant to know that. And that's why I think it's quite clever that obviously it was Wolverine himself who was the one who discovered that they're in yeah. this alternate kind of reality. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's move on to uh, Scott. Let's take a look at yours, buddy, because yours one was yours was pretty interesting as well. That's pretty epic, man. This is probably my favourite page in terms of like the detail and the art and stuff. But I'm on a similar stance to Phil, where like there wasn't really much that blew me away. I actually just like I had to really, really look through all of the books to just to decide this was like like okay, I'll choose this one. Like, mm. yeah, like. As everything is nice and clean and colourful and, you know, neat and well-designed, but nothing was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Nothing, I didn't turn a page and go, that's cool. Um, yeah, everything was just 
all right see i i uh, that to me looks amazing like you, it does I, look I know. I won't yeah, you guys are like playing it down a little bit. You're like, yeah, it was my favorite panel, but it didn't blow me away. I'm getting those vibes from you. I, mean, yeah, I had three or four that I had to pick through because I was, as I was reading, I was like, what? That one, that one, that one. And then I was going back and forth and then I had to pick one. So I finally picked one. But yeah. it was hard to pick my favorite. I had I find like, four or five. So, yeah. So I- I sent my image later on. I, I, I'd read the book earlier on today. And again, because nothing stood for me, I had to go and I flick through a page because I didn't want to have another week where I, did, I didn't pick a panel. So I wanted to put a panel up the screen. So I was just trying to find something. And that did. That, that was the only thing to done for me. Like I said, there was nothing for me that was brilliant compared to the other stuff we've read. Nothing, nothing really stuff. leapt out and slapped you in the face. No. But it was, uh, it was, it was lovely. It was just... Nice. We just say a quick hello to Martin from uh, N3 Lines Information Booth. How you doing, Martin? Hope you're well, mate. Uh, and TB collects is saying, I agree with Scott. I found the art meh. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Tottenham Gaming wants one of your cups, Scott. <laughs> your <laughs> promo's working, they'll be for sale soon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Shane. Let's have a look at your panel then, buddy. You can uh, you can talk us through your favorite page. Uh, there you go. I think that was the one you picked. Oh, that was a good one. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that was it. the end of um, issue three. And I just thought, I just love that it's the lack of color. But the detail is so well done on such a dark page. You just got cloak and the Hawkeye, and it's yeah, I loved it. Yeah, that is a great uh, page. See, yeah, like I see, want to edit out the do it, and that will be a nice screensaver for my phone. Yeah, seeing right. seeing uh, cloak in this um, made me happy that we read Maximum Carnage. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always happy, happy we read Maximum Carnage. Really <laughs> <laughs> the only time I'm happy. See, to be yeah. honest, I, I did not realize till there now that Cloak was in this panel. I just assumed it was just Hawkeye appearing, like from the shot from the shadow. <laughs> what? Come on! I, did, I didn't realize it was, it was Cloak. Yeah, I was just... that cut off on your trade as well, or something? Was his head <laughs> cut off? I don't think so. But that's just uh, no. I just didn't. I didn't realize. Well, this is uh, Cloak. Is that it's that's it, like he gets involved when uh, when Wolverine kind of wakes up on the uh, the big yeah. air Harrier for uh, for Shield. He kind of like I love that bit where he just kind of like he realizes things are right and he's like Psh, I'm off, man, and he just jumps off the side of the uh, of the carrier. <laughs> yeah, he just plummets like, to the ground. He's like I'm off, man. And uh, yeah, and then when he's kind of on the bike, um, zooming away, like uh, I, I quite like that part where Cloak just kind of grabbed him, didn't he? And just kind of opened up and like transported him away. Um, so yeah, I, I loved the the way Cloak was drawn in this. I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, uh, we got MJ here as well. MJ Comics, howdy MJ. Hope you well. Uh, my panel, the one I chose, uh, my page. Sorry, is I picked this. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Just because, and the reason why I chose this, because I think it shows uh, what I was saying earlier about the artwork flicking between, you know, fairly standard to kind of like really inventive um, in some of the concepts that they were using. And I think each of these kind of things kind of sum up an element of the book. You know, you've got that kind of the strangeness, trippy, weird feel to the House of M story about the, you know, like kind of altering reality. And then you kind of got the candle blown out. It's kind of the sadness of it all that you get in there. And then you've got the kind of like the maternal stuff going on there as well. I think it, this that one page tends to just capture the whole vibe of the book for me. And I thought it was great to just show those different kind of techniques. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a very busy page in it, but not in a bad way. Um, no. It's just showcasing all of these different skills uh, of of uh, Olivia. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, and yeah. come on, that 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 top one, that it is, is impressive. That's a, it is that, is, that screams desktop wallpaper, doesn't it? Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah. Like his face, he just looks like he's in agony. Yeah, I I completely agree. Yeah, Comic Bandy saying uh, that top panel is pretty striking. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of so, reminds me of uh, in the scene in Infinity War. Do you remember where they go to nowhere and Thanos kind of does that? Uh, Oh, I forgot her name. The one with the horn. I don't know where her uh, name is. The, the unknown character. No one knows her name. But the bug lady. Yeah. Man, but so she, she, kind of, yeah. she kind of disappears like that. But this obviously, like that was done like a jokey kind of way where this is just kind of more like, you know, Wanda's a badass and she's going to make this happen. And that's it. Type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick hello to Shattered Glass comic reviews as well. Hello. How are you? 
Yeah, so I, I genuinely thought that it kind of flicked between the two for me. Very standard kind of mid mid noughties artwork to but the the way that they came up with some of those concepts visually I thought was really, really good. Um but what I what I didn't enjoy in this book and this kind of moves us on to the writing. Has anybody got anything more to do with art that they want to talk about? Uh, there was a, a page which I didn't send you, but mm. uh, Storm was the. I, I actually thought Shane would have picked this, but Storm looked fantastic. The bit where she's getting ready for the kind of gala or whatever. Uh, yeah. With, I, just think, I mean, yep, Titty yeah. Tape 2.0. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, uh, I, um, what I didn't like was like when you just said about it being busy and stuff, and I, I found like, the dialogue boxes on this to be hugely infuriating to me it just seemed like they stacked them i wish i'd have grabbed an example of that for you guys as well but i, I didn't but in there are some panels in this where the dialogue boxes are literally almost overlapping each other they're like that layered on top did anybody else have a problem with that yeah like i really like the dialogue and we'll, we'll get on to that but i know what you're trying to say like it was all kind of stacked up and there was mm. too much kind of like Obviously, in a conversation, they're doing one bubble and the next bubble, the next one. It just seemed it was all kind of put into one kind of space. I found it hard to f see who was talking. I had to like, almost like follow the line to the, to yeah. the time who was actually speaking yeah. and then come back and reading it. But so yeah, yeah. Extra pages. Yeah. Yeah. That would have helped. Yeah. Two extra panels. Yeah. yeah. I, I get like, there's a lot in this. I think for eight issues, there is a lot in this. So I can, I can understand that they want to kind of squeeze in as much as they can. Uh, but the dialogue for me, like, I don't know, maybe if they'd have thought about a different layout to go with the panel or something, but it just, for me, I it just, they were all bunched up in parts. And I'm like, that's not cool, man, you know. Yeah, they yeah. just don't like, turn me off a bit. Too much text on one page, mm. which can yeah. be easily fixed with just an extra page. Yeah, and it yeah. covers a lot of the art as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah someone's gone through all the trouble of doing an entire page of art, and then you just slap words Speech over each page and, and <laughs> cut it in half as well. Cut the yeah. bottom. Yeah, half yeah. Half don't, don't need the bottom of a page. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Olivier Copel was like maybe like he was jumping ship the DC, and they thought we'll stuff him, we'll cut his art out, and put speech bubbles everywhere. <laughs> what I did, what, what I did like in this as well, the like art wise, like I loved the. Um, the, the 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 way that Scarlet Witch was drawn in this, yeah. um, I thought she was really good. She kind of went from, at points like you like you kind of felt really sad for her to being terrified, um, like in some of those panels at the end there. And I thought I was really clever how you know Olivia had, had, had done that you know through the art there, because she doesn't really have a lot of dialogue in this. Not really until further down the line at the end. There's a bit in the beginning and then a lot at the end, isn't there? Um, but yeah, I really like the way that she was drawn in this um and i kind i like the way wolverine was as well i think those the character designs of those two the way that they were drawn yeah. i really warm to i i had an issue with the story overall i think um i think you know at the start of each, each issue they had that kind of synopsis or like you know like a previously this happened mm. you know those bits those bits helped me more understand what was going on rather than than the book itself. Reading the actual yeah. book, I was like, "So this was happened." Uh, I'd read it. I'm like, "Okay, cool." And then I go to the next issue, and I'd I'd read like the last paragraph or two, and then I'd be like, "Ah, right." Mm. So like, I I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it wasn't explained well enough uh, in the actual yeah. dialogue in the book. And I think for me that that made me lose it a bit because I was like, "Well, if I'm just understanding more what's going on in just this one page, telling me what's going on, why don't I just read?" eight of those and then I'll be done. Like, you know, so, um, but I just, I don't know. Um, yeah, it just, it just felt uh, there was nothing wrong with the story. I think it flowed well, but what they were trying to get across wasn't coming across. Yeah. And yeah. I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling overly grabbed by the story. Um, See, I, I kind of disagreed. It. I, I thought it came across really well. Uh, I think it had some irks in the way that it was written, the dialogue boxes, some of the art was a bit here and there. Um, you know, I wouldn't say bad again. Um, just uh, maybe questionable choices would, you know, would be the better way to put it. But I thought it, it came across well. Like, I think it told the story well for me. Um, 
I, I get, you know, like, again, what we said about them maybe being out of context, you know, when they, like when you're reading this, if you haven't read Avengers Disassembled or, um, you know, about the previous Scarlet Witch stuff, like I could understand you might be like, well, what am, what's going on here? Like, you know, I'm, what am I missing out of that? But as far as the kind of story writing goes, I, I thought you followed quite a linear path with it and you didn't think so. Well, no, I, I felt like it had a nice path and it flowed well and it wasn't like, wasn't jumping loads, but it just felt mm. flat. I just oh, couldn't right. get over, like, I couldn't, uh, I don't know if I've, I've had a bad week or just, you know what I mean? But I just, I <laughs> couldn't get into it. I just couldn't, like, nothing in it excited me. Like, I, I found some bits interesting, but mm. overall... You mean it, not, it, didn't, it didn't have a lot of pizzazz factor for you yeah, in, it's, in that it's, sense? Yeah, it's mm. not like, okay. it's not something, like, I would only recommend this book now purely because of WandaVision. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it as a, you know, oh, what should I read? I like X-Men. Oh, look at that. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have a little chat about the one division stuff and connections and stuff there. Just just having a look at the chat as well. Um, TB Collects is saying, and that was my big issue with this. There was so much going on and so many characters. Uh, and the action was hard to follow. I can, I can kind of see that. There was there was a lot of people in this, wasn't there? Yeah, like a lot of. Was needed. You could yeah. have cut that cast down by more than half. And talk the yeah. same story. I completely agree because a lot of some of these characters, um, they they were kind of literally appearing in one panel, and then you you kind of didn't see them again for like for ages. It was just a cameo. Kind of, yeah, that like, was the point of you being here. Like yeah. you can clearly tell who the main characters in that book was. It was like oh, Wolverine, <laughs> uh, yeah, Wolverine, you had Spider Man, obviously Wanda and Pietro and uh, Magneto, but then you know like. And that that new mutant, that little girl, what was her name Layla? Was it Layla? Layla, Layla Miller. Yeah. And you know, just you could tell who the main characters were, but you know, they could have cut a few characters out. I think yeah. of the, the cameo appearances, and they just oh, there. totally. They could have definitely trimmed this down a little bit. Um, Firehawk saying, uh, "I think he's agreeing with you, Scott. It wasn't very exciting that's, story. That's no what it is." Like, no emotional I, connection. Liam, he's saying he agrees with you as well. Um, Sparks Comics. I uh, still haven't read House of M, so it's good to hear these views on it. And uh, Firehawk was saying, I was really wanting it to be better. I think it's definitely the emotional thing that, that is for me. Like I like I love a book that – I love anything that pulls on my heartstrings, a film, a TV show, a book, anything. So I think you know, for, for it to be lacking that is – it's not. Did, did you? You didn't get any emotion from this. Not a thing. Like what about Wanda when... and the children and no? No. What about when Spider Man had essentially everything he wanted? He was married to, to Gwen. Oh. He had his uncle Ben, and he thought this was real until they took him out of that reality. And but you see it coming. Broken. That's the thing. You see yeah. it coming. You literally see this montage of Layla going. Now you know your life. Now you know your life. Now you know your life. And then you just go, right, Spider-Man, he's going to freak out. It's... There, there's a point <sighs> as well. As a, uh, Jessica Drew, she's Spider-Woman, is that right? She's Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew? Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. She, she had the argument, was like, well, why are, we trying, why are we trying to change this? Isn't this what yeah. we all want? Yeah. Isn't this a like, great life? Like, there's no, like, why are you trying to rip this from us? And then there was a part where, like, Wolverine was like, you'll be really embarrassed. You said that out loud. Because it is a bit yes. stupid. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She makes a valid point. Like this is everything they all want, including Spider Man, including Wolverine. Obviously, Wolverine regenerated and got his memories back. But it's just like, why? I I found that emotional because everyone had everything they wanted. I will and, say the one thing I didn't find this lacking in was emotion for me. I it, this definitely tugged at the heartstrings for me. Like I felt so sad for one day how she's kind of been ripped apart by all of that personal stuff that she'd been through and you know killing the avengers accidentally and you know the whole uh, genosha genocide and war that she'd seen like she was completely breaking down and like i really felt that man but is that because you read the previous story because going yeah. into it i haven't read the previous story so mm. you told me that she had kids and they weren't real and they're dead and she has to give them up in the first few mm. pages so i was like okay I'm okay, not yeah, part, so you're you're taking it from that part, yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe yeah, that okay. is that, and may, maybe having that extra, uh, that part there well, does influence. You, you're, you're right a, there, maybe. You're, you're a big X-Men fan, aren't you? So 
I guess you've kind of grown up and you you've learned and you know month after month you're reading about these characters you get in that connection with them but I think for me and Shane it's like these are characters I know them yeah that's it you know yeah I mean the uh, only, just uh, oh sorry go on go, go on me I was just gonna say the only emotional thing I found in the book that was quite mm. disturbing was when I realized that Spider-Man when he was going to go back to his normal life was actually with MJ and he'd actually wished that he wasn't with MJ and was with Gwen Stacy and I think <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> <laughs> wow, well, you you saying that uh, this is address cons because I can see one here. Is right. uh, MJ Comics is saying if anyone has Amazon Prime, House of oh, M is cool. three with Prime Reading right now. There you go, cheers for that, MJ. That's that's so yeah. useful to know. We've got uh, Ch Chamorro Cinema saying the Spider Man stuff is tragic as fuck. Yo, there you go. Like it is right. tragic. I I never really looked at it in the sense of okay, if everyone was getting their wishes granted, he was actually married to Gwen Stacy. Yeah, but yes. that's yeah. kind of strange. Yeah, it's kind of strange that you would want another woman and your uncle back. It's like, but you've got your woman. You could just have your yeah. uncle back, maybe. Yeah, that kind of I just like emphasizes kind of really the harsh on MJ. Yeah, like but it's kind of really tragic. literally the second woman, like the second choice. Because if Gwen yeah. Stacy, like, Spider Man's on it, mate, like Sonic. <laughs> she, 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 it was and all up in that business. <laughs> yeah the harsh reality but, is she was the second choice i mean he loved gwen stacy first and that obviously uh, yeah but get over mm. it <laughs> Le liam liam saying uh it says a lot that the only way that they could put emotion into it was give a character an emotional side story uh, that's how liam feels about that and tb saying completely agree with scott no emotional connection to be fair i'm not a marvel reader so not really attached yeah. to the characters I will. But yeah. Wow. I will. Like I'm on my own here. I'm kind of standing here, and everyone's going, "Oh, there's no emotion." And I, no, I I'm, 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 I'm right with you, Dean. I, I agree. There was, there was plenty. There wasn't, there wasn't loads. It didn't pull on my heartstrings as such as you want in the book sometimes. But I definitely think there was enough there to kind of feel invested that you wanted things to work out a certain way. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I thought, I thought it was. I love this. Uh, I, I, like, I like I like this comment from Firehawk. You see, I like this. We're talking about the spider. That's why Spider Man sucks. <laughs> I will agree that his side of the thing was tragic, but I I really wish they did his bit first because I like mm. I said earlier, I could see it come in, and that's probably why I didn't have that much of a thing with it. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I can understand that. You know. I, thought, I can hear music in the background, yeah, like some music going on outside, someone's oh. on the party. <laughs> COVID party! <laughs> it's probably Seth Lordley and his pals, we can hear it from here. Yeah, rocking up, <laughs> they're, they're turning up. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm glad at least somebody agrees with me then, Phil, uh, you know, that there was there was uh, some uh, emotional connection in this book. I feel like um, I have to comment as well, because, like, yes, there, there was stuff that happened before, and even the way it ended, there's still more to come from this story, because obviously... Xavier, Xavier wasn't about and so on but like I just think like say whenever Wolverine jumps off the helicarrier because like oh this 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 is crap this is this isn't real reality boing mm. he just jumps off like I don't know how he thousands of feet in the air he is but he knows he's going to like regenerate and he just doesn't care I thought that was yeah. great so straight, straight from the off and the kind of the, it was it, there was action scenes obviously whenever like the new, the new shield uh, members were after him and so on <sighs> The only thing that I found weird about it in terms of like all oh, the kind of what do you call it, Scott character format sometimes is whenever they had like um, Black Panther and Namor and uh, a few others going to this this kind of what was it the, the gala whatever it was the the King Magnus thing like why did they all of a sudden start fighting them like they were just like unbeknownst what's happening they're just going to this way event to, to applaud Magneto and next thing these guys come and start kicking their asses. It's just, yeah, they. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> I, I do feel like they, they, they just needed some sort of action in that scene where it didn't really need to be. But again, yeah. you're right, it was a distraction because then uh, Emma Frost was able to kind of sneak in the back door to to try and find charge and so on. But yeah, I, I thought I thought that story was great, and I don't I don't yeah. need to know what happened before. I'm happy to piece things together later on. I think this could have been trimmed down. I'll say that about it. Like if you're going into this and you're kind of like reading this it doesn't feel like a short one i think i said before we came on live that i found this there's a lot squeezed into these eight issues and i do feel yeah. some some of it could be clipped out like we said some of the dialogue could have been trimmed some of the characters could have been kind of like 
trimmed down a little bit. And I think that that maybe would have had a little bit more impact if it, if that was stuff was kind of slim blind a little bit. But would it have though? I like, feel it would. I feel it would have for me. Because okay. again, like Phil saying, like the character vomit with people just making a cameo in one panel and then yeah. not really having any connection to the story. Like you could get rid of that and you know maybe if you've got room then you can develop some of the themes yeah. and the other characters that you do have in there um, like, so i would say if people are going to read this just watch out for that you know you know like 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 the bit towards the end i think it was in the last issue where the news was on and captain mm. america and iron man were talking you could have mm. taken them out and just had someone else talking that was more relevant to the story i know they're in avengers tower but yeah. It could have been anyone. See, I like that part because it essentially highlighted the fact that the only people who remembered what what occurred were the people who were under the, oh, the, yeah. the protection from yeah. So Iron Man and Captain America being the top dogs on the Avengers yeah. didn't know because they weren't there because obviously Captain America was like a hundred years old, so they didn't recruit yeah. him for their re their re team. Oh, but yeah, yeah that highlights the fact that these people remember and these ones don't, so they're not important. Forget about Iron Man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I take it back. Okay. <laughs> he, redra- he redacts yeah. his uh, his his, uh, <laughs> his criticism there. Yeah, I um, I, I like th- everything was there for me. Like I can't, I don't know. Like I think me, I'm lining more with Phil here. I think you know, like me and Phil seem to be on with the art, with the emotional connection and stuff. There, uh, I won't say it was a perfect book for me though, especially when it comes to X Men. Um, I, I won't say it was you know, the the best thing that I've ever read. Um, I think this is one of those books. I forget who said it now. So apologize. I apologize for not remembering who made the comment, but you would think this would be better given the hype around House of M. You know, this is the the story arc that gave us those three magic words, isn't it? No more mutants, you know, like that's a slogan you can buy on t-shirts and posters and fridge magnets and stuff like that. You know, and it's also the phrase that you know gave us things like the new avengers and things like that so you would think this maybe would be a little bit more epic i think yeah i agree does yeah. it get more epic afterwards i know like does it carry on after this after the you have to read the comic scott to find out that's how oh. it works <laughs> you just said the end at, at the end so i was like does it carry on were you not happy with the end then? You, did you feel a bit shortchanged by that? I did. I was like, oh, right, okay. So there's just a bit of mutant energy floating around. Cool. Mm. Now what? Like, like, is there more? Is there more? Please. I, I, I do agree with Firehawk here as well. It says it was written more like an Avengers comic. But to be th- the thing is, I think this is an Avengers comic. Like, it's not... It's not really an X-Men book. This is an Avengers book. It comes off the back of Avengers disassembled uh, straight into this. So, yeah, it's not really an X-Book, you know, but the fact that you've got, like, Wolverine and all of that, I think it tries to kind of, like, shoehorn them together a little bit, and it, it doesn't quite sit too good for me yeah. as, as an Even X-Men in, fan. But... In the opening dialogue, like, like, Wanda is an Avenger. Yes, her father is Magneto, but she is an Avenger. So they mm. want to take kind of the lead in the whole thing. So I agree that was an Avengers book, but mm. even like the co- the cover Wolverine's right bang in the middle of the cover. It's House of M Magneto. It does kind of try like it's trying to be an X book, but it is really an Avengers book. Yeah, Tom here from this Monday movies is saying I hated the end. To be honest, you just didn't like this shruggy emoji. <laughs> there I, you go. I would have to agree with yeah. Um, yeah you 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 yeah, you are on, on board with that one. Yeah, I love, love the art, but it was just, it was okay. It was a great idea, mm-hmm. it was, but it was just okay. Okay, so you like the idea. Yeah. You just maybe yeah. think this was not executed as yeah. well as it should have been. Well, I mean, I love it like yeah. a story. So, like, if you change anything in the universe, it, it can be fun. You can tell a story. You can tell a fun story with a tragic outcome. You know, mm. you can make it fun along the way, but they didn't even try to make it fun, did they? They were just like, here's the new world, and it's like this now, and it's like, okay. Where was mm. the fun? I would have seen, I would have liked to have seen another issue, like, of, like, the, like, after the end, you know what I mean? So, like, or just if they cut off the new reality by one issue and just extended the new, new reality. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Just added a bit more onto that. I would have liked that more because it's more of the aftermath. And I was starting to get that kind of like, you know, the Infinity War feeling from the MCU. That like well, there you, you, this does continue. Uh, this temporarily, uh, I think it's fair to say, altered the Marvel world for a while. Um, okay. Yeah, because out of this, you know, seeing as we had the Avengers dead, um, you know, we had the new Avengers come out of this and stuff. Yeah. So the consequences of this did kind of shoot forward for in Marvel comics and have repercussions that kind of went throughout uh, all of those comic books. See, Scott kind of mentioned like Endgame there. Like this may be an unpopular opinion, but I kind of think this book and kind of what happened before and after potentially could have been its own kind of arc within the MCU. If we had a had X Men years ago, they could have built towards something like this instead of using it for a TV show for One Division. They would have had this kind of uh, her going crazy, and that would have been a big kind of story epic, whatever. So I feel like it's, it is wasted in a TV show, but it's maybe not as big as Endgame. But I think that was quite an epic storyline over the whole kind of Marvel universe. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was it was huge. Um, may, maybe too huge for me. Um, that's the thing. Like the fact I, I looked it up and I think there was a total of 62 or 63 issues, including all of the tie-ins and stuff. And I'm just kind of like, who's got time for this, man? You know, like that is a big event. Like, and I appreciate Big A's better for a lot of people who are, you know what I mean? But... <laughs> Like that, six, 63 issues is like a lot, man. Do you know what I mean? For an event. From a fella who's collecting all the King and Black tie-ins, House of Them, 60 issues, they're rookie numbers, them. They're rookie numbers. <laughs> well, Comic Deal, he's saying uh, some of the times were good, correct? The Fantastic Four ones with Doctor Doom was good stuff. There you go. See, so, I like my... tie-ins because, like I said, I do like an Elseworlds tale. So to see how some characters are in a new world, I might yeah, like yeah. I heard that the Iron Man was good. A friend of mine and said the Iron Man one was good because it follows him. Because obviously he is a sapien, isn't he? He's not a mutant, so he's on the other end. You know, yeah, he's like the biggest sapien business dude, isn't he? Like in that world, yeah. um, so it kind of follows him. I think that's a three issue tie-in. I think my friend was saying, but he said that one was quite good. I might have a look at some of them. Yeah, Firehawk saying that uh, anytime you can include Wonder Man, it's a good time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm trying to I see if that. I can compare this to like the Flashpoint stuff because that was, you know, alternate reality, you know, different style, and that was like seventy odd issues, um, or or no. I don't. I don't think you could say that it was. I don't think it's to the magnitude of Flashpoint for me. Yeah. Uh, okay. But if you're talking mutants, like as an X Men fan, this is kind of big deal, you know. But purely because the conclusion, the no more mutants. And then yeah. we see all of the mutants don't have that that X gene there anymore. Uh, that had huge repercussions, you know, for people like me who were, you know, X Men fans. Um, so, so yeah, I, but I wouldn't go so far. As to say it was as epic as Flashpoint. I wouldn't go that far for me. See, I love the irony as well. Like, if you recall, there was like a dialogue between Beast and uh, uh, Hank Pym or Henry Pym, Hank Pym, same guy, and. The base was basically saying, you know, I know it's, it's hard. You see your kind of species just kind of gradually fading out and you will be gone eventually and you can see it all in front of your eyes type thing. Yeah. Then, of course, it's like rules reversed. It was actually the mutants at the end of the story were wiped yeah. out type thing. I, I think yeah. it was a nice contrast because before this, you obviously had that whole genocide in, in, in Genosha there for, for, for the X-Men. And it was nice to see, I think, off the back of that, the coin flipped where mutants were the ones that had the dominant control of the world and it was humans that didn't it was nice to see that alternative reality um but again back to the thing like it could it have been more grandiose and a bit more epic i think it probably could and also, execution when they flipped with the mutants were just treating the people like the people treated the mutants like they weren't any better just yeah you 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 think they would have been maybe that's maybe that's the message the book's trying to say doesn't matter who's on top they're always going to shit on the little guy maybe that was the point yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. and i am glad they went with sapiens and not homos <laughs> <laughs> Shame. Yeah. uh martin saying uh sorry not an avengers fan and um, and Firehawk is saying, only reason I can get into Avengers is due to the MCU. You know, I find that with a lot of people. Like, you ask them, oh, did you read the Avengers comics? And people are like, no. 
Um, not really until the films. Like that was where the interest started to, to garner. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Like Iron Man, I think, owes his popularity to those movies, man. Like, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, hardcore comic book fans would have been reading Iron Man one. But I think as far as mainstream goes, like, like, I don't think like any of my non-comic book friends would have even known really who Iron Man was like before those films, you know? Sure. That, that, that's why they picked Iron Man because they didn't. It was a, it was a win-win situation basically with a, with a nothing character. But you're mm. right. I, 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 I am reading the current Avengers stuff, but I don't know anything other than maybe Civil War. I don't know any other kind of main Avengers story arc or storyline. Well, yeah. Uh, we, I, I'm with Firehawk here. Yeah, like, boom! I was always on the X side. Me too, buddy. Me too. Um, so let's just have a quick before we do our final thoughts. Of course, let's have a quick chat about MCU. We seem to have gravitated there naturally because we've gone through this anyway. Um, so, do we think this is actually going to play? Excuse me, hiccups uh, a part at that point um, if in, into the, the films and stuff and everything. For, for me personally. I don't think that they, we're going to see this. I don't think we're going to see no. a House of M. I really don't. I think like, where we are in the TV show now is where this all started with Wanda blipping the kids out because they're yeah. manifestations of Mephisto. And I can't see the MCU doing the whole Scarlet Witch having a mental breakdown twice. Like, I can't see it happening for me. Yeah. I think, like, think after, after reading this and after reading The Vision, I can see that they've gone... All right, we'll take a bit of that. We'll take a bit of that, and we'll chuck it together, put it into a TV show, and see what happens. Um, yeah. And that's, 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 that's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think reading this though, it's quite clear because uh, we read the vision as well, didn't we? The Tom King run, we we did that in one of the episodes, and it's quite clear that they're kind of cherry picking bits from different story arcs involving Vision and Scarlet, which, you know, we had Sparky the dog. A lot of the fragment in reality and stuff was very visually present in this yeah. book. Um, you know, so I, 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 I think that they're kind of choosing across the different arcs, but I really don't think we're heading down the No More Mutants no. route for uh, me. You see, I, really don't. I, I think it's possible. The only reason why I say that is because obviously Wanda at the minute has lost her marbles, or so we think, maybe she's been coerced. But um, she's obviously going to appear in the new Doctor Strange movie. And Doctor yeah. Strange has this kind of, oh, what was it called? The, uh, the stuff in plane, the way he's able to communicate with her in this book. The astral plane. The astral plane. So there's obviously a connection there too. So I think maybe this is kind of, not, not the whole no more mutants thing, but I do think this is going to be relevant more with the Doctor Strange movie and the introduction mm. to the mutants. Maybe it's going to make rules reverse, whatever she's doing in this book, whatever she's doing in the MCU now, it's like, it's different. She'll bring the mutants in, as opposed to. Well, somebody else was saying that. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and they said, "Oh, if you notice, Darcy had said to uh, Monica Rambeau, you've been through that force field three times now. Three times, it's altered your genetic code.' Yeah. And then, you know, uh, you know I'm not going to go into it because in case people haven't seen it, but you know, in the last episode, we saw some stuff there with Monica Rambeau, and a lot of people were going, "Oh, you know, is this you know able to change the genetics of people? If so, does that mean this is going to happen?" But I mean, I don't know. I just don't see this leading to a house of M in the MCU for me. Um, I, I, I just can't see them going. If Hawk's asking, could Professor X and Magneto have anything to do with what's happening in WandaVision? I mean, they could do. I mean, they could take it that way if they wanted to. I personally think we're going, now we've got Ag of Harkness confirmed there. Uh, I think we're going down the road of Mephisto. I think all the people speculating on that guy are probably the ones that are right at the moment. I think I'm going towards the more nightmare kind of thing with Doctor Strange. Ooh, Ooh okay, you're going towards nightmare. Shane, what, anything from you? Um, I don't want to speculate. I just want to wait and see. I'm enjoying it. He's a wait and see kind of guy. Phil, the thing is, there's there's two more episodes to go. It could really go either way. Really, could yeah, it? Could. And yeah. I, 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 I'm the same machine. I don't want to speculate because I don't want to be let down. I just I don't want I to feel really disappointed. Hope next episode is just entitled Agatha all along and we just get an entire episode of Agatha. You just want a standalone series of Agatha and I don't I, really that thing do. I, I want her to be the next Thanos just in every wow. Wow. forever. <laughs> Liam, Liam is saying uh, we won't see this in WandaVision but as it will be leading into Doctor Strange we could see more of the House of M in that film. That's true, maybe they could split the elements of it up into in, across the two movies and stuff. Uh, the chat just jumped on me here, so apologies, folks. I'm trying to scroll back up. 
says, uh, I feel a great swell of pity for anyone who goes to wonder looking for trouble. <laughs> says Tottenham Gaming. <laughs> Comic Van says, uh, I thought it might be interesting if they figure out somehow that she already said no more mutants, and that's why there's no mutants, and they bring them back. Ooh! I, I had thought that as well, that maybe, like, you know, what's ha- what's going on before somehow was a different kind of reality or something. So, like, we find out she's actually already done that bit at some point yeah. earlier on. Like, oh, you never know, man, yeah. Uh, Firehawk saying, are mutants not born? Can mutants be made? Uh they're usually born, but I think they can be made because Mr. Sinister wasn't a, a mutant, was he? He actually volunteered or made himself a mutant. Uh, Perpetual Comics, Nightmare is a great shout, Scott. Mm, there thanks. you go. So it looks like uh, there, uh, there's a lot of uh, shouts for Nightmare and stuff there as well. So there we go, then, folks. That was House of M. That was our little chat and discussion about House of M. Uh, we'll do final thoughts and scores then and uh, let's see what we all thought of this Um, folks if you've read it this week and you've read along with us uh, drop your score 1 to 10 in the chat as always I'll make sure I pick it up and we'll we'll, we'll see what you guys thought of it as well let's go then Phil Uh, I love this book I I, at the start reading it obviously things that went on before but I don't know if what issues you guys read i had one page of like a recap in my trade book to give here's what happened six months ago yeah she's killed, she's killed this and da, da, da. so i think like that was enough for me to kind of get a background of what was going on but i would have liked to have read what happened before so there is an element of the fact that there's stuff before and there's certainly stuff after like where is charlie xavier and so on and uh obviously wanda vision or wanda at the end was just wandering around like a market and stuff so there's still more to the story so it's not complete but I thought the artwork's fine. It wasn't spectacular. It was grand. It was nice. But Wolverine was really, really cool. Emma Frost was really, really cool. Uh, I just quite liked the f- from start to finish. Like, I was just I enjoyed myself reading it. I didn't. It's not the best book I've ever read uh, by all means, but I enjoyed reading it, and that's what matters for me sometimes. So, um, I'm. It's hard. It's not really what I thought it was going to be. I thought it would have more Wanda Vision kind of related references and there wasn't enough other than the fact that's an alternate world that we're living in that was pretty much it um so oh man i'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a seven i think that's a first score it's only been marked down because of the, the 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 art was just okay and the fact that you know the trade paperback wasn't uh, planned out too well at the point where it missed like some things but the dialogue even to it this is i have read like maybe three michael bendis titles this is the best one yeah. For me. I'm not a Bendis okay. fan, but this is the best Bendis book I've read. Right, yeah. So that's a, a seven from you then. Best yeah. Bendis book ever. Out of the three or four I've read. How yeah. so much is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shane, over to you, buddy. Um, for me, I think this was um, overhyped a little bit um, by quite a few people talking about this and WandaVision. So I was kind of expecting this to jump through the decades. I was thinking we'd be seeing like the X-Men in the 60s and 70s and 80s stuff because I've been watching WandaVision. So I, my view was already skewed, unfortunately. Great idea. I really like the idea of changing a universe and altering things like that. I, I suck up for stories like that. But I think this was just really dull. I was bored. When I was reading it, I put it down quite a few times and didn't bother coming back to it for a good few hours or even the rest of the day. And that says a lot for me when I'm reading a comic because if it's good, I can just write and read 10, 12 issues in one go. Um, Art, I really like the art. Some pages were blinding, um, especially that Quicksilver one and the the, um, Cloak and Hawkeye. Some were just okay, but for me, the faces, if you've got a good face, I'm happy with the art, as simple as that. Overall, I didn't hate it, but I, did, I didn't have a good time reading it. Um, and that's a big thing for me. I have to enjoy reading a comic book. There was so much I've missed before and after, but I, I understood what was happening, but I didn't enjoy it. So overall, to be fair to the art and the idea, I think a five would be fair. Okay, it's a five from Shane. Is that a solid five or a floppy five? It's a semi-five. 
It's a semi five. <laughs> yeah, okay. Happy to see you five. <laughs> Scott, over to you, mate. Um, it was it was all right. It was flat. The story was just, you know, like like Shane said earlier, like it was a good idea. The concept is really good, but I think they just um, just miss shot it a bit and. <laughs> what else? What else is there? Like the ending really bugged me. Um, I wish it just literally just cut it off, and I was like, right, okay, so what now? And I really do think that they could have cut down some of the uh, some of the dialogue, some of the characters, or maybe just focused more on less characters, so we could get that more. Well, I could get more of that emotional thing, um, mm. and just get. You know, attached to someone more than than nothing. Um, the art was lovely. I got nothing at all uh, to say bad about the art. Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, but yeah, it was just for me. It was just all story. Um, didn't didn't have a good time. I I don't want to say I didn't have a bad time, but it was just a very neutral read. I was just reading it and just taking it in and not feeling much. Um, so. Yeah, for that, I'm probably going to stay with Shane and go for a five. Well, oy, 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 oy. It's a five from Scott there. All right, folks. I am going to get your scores in, guys, if you if you haven't already. And uh, I've been picking them up as we've been going through, so don't worry. I think I've got them all so far. We'll go through them in a second. Uh, for me... Um, I love this as an ex-fan. Like, I know the consequence of this rumbled on throughout Marvel. So, um, I kind of like that. I love the art. Didn't have an issue. Like I said, it flicked between being kind of very kind of standard mid-naughty stuff. But the concepts were really great. Like, we saw in that Hawkeye panel or, like, Shane's panel with Cloak or the Sentinel stuff that Scott showed and things like that. You know, like, they were all... The concept of the way it was laid out was really good. The dialogue really irked me, man. I'm just kind of like enough with the stacked dialogue boxes on top of each other. It's driving me mad. Uh, I'd had enough of that, like literally by issue four. I think like halfway through, I was like done. Um, but yeah, I, I liked it. I felt an emotional connection in this. It's um, like I think I'm the kind of opposite to you two guys down there. Uh, I, I really felt for Wonder in this and had a sense that she was like trapped in all of that and there was no way to go and her only way out of that to kind of just end all of the, the, the shit was to just go and like take everything away you know like so no more mutants forget it we're done and that's a pretty epic thing for i think brave thing for marvel to do um you know at that point so for me uh i think it's going to be uh, i'm going to go 7.5 um and purely like i have marked it down a little bit just because I do feel it could have been, like Shane, I do agree with you there, the execution of this could have been a bit more grandiose, could have been a bit more, uh, it could have had a bit more pizzazz to it, a bit more wow factor. Um, and it, it did have that, but it was like right at the end. It was one of those things, wasn't it, where the punch comes in right at the end, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think if that was a bit addressed a bit better, I, I think it would, this would have scored a bit higher for me. So 7.5. Nice. Fair. There we go. Okay, so the chat, like, now I've got to scroll. I know I've got to go right back up here now, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. I have got everybody's scores down, so don't worry about that. I've wrote them down. But if So if I do miss something in the comments here, uh, you know, don't don't shoot me. Uh, let me just find the starting point here. So Andy from Perpetual Comics gives it a 3.5. Uh, we've got Firehawk, who gave it a six. Uh, we've got TV Collect saying, just no emotional connection. So, some cool concepts, love the cloak stuff, but overall, just okay. 5.5 from TB Collects. Uh, Comic Band is saying, I can't score the book because I haven't read it yet, but I can judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> the cover, I give it seven out of ten. <laughs> Sneaky. Uh, Tom gives it a five. Uh, Firehawk changed his score again. 
5.5. That's okay. I've got that amended for you, buddy. Well, Don't worry. I'll take the average of his score to be. His <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam Cara is saying art was hit and miss. Concept was good, but definitely was expecting better. But unfortunately, a five out of ten. Ooh, Liam, that's that's low for you, buddy. Um, have I missed anybody? Just going down. Uh, comic deal. Uh, I'd give it a pleasing seven. There you go. So. <laughs> think that is everyone if i have missed anybody out give me a shout i have got everything written down here and all of that together makes an average of for the people watching a 5.5 out of 10 that's what the guys have given it uh, watching average. yeah slightly not above our average our average is currently sitting at 7.2 of what what we give out so it's below our given average um but yeah it's above i suppose the uh in the top half uh so for us here uh we gave it a seven we gave it a five we gave it another five and we gave it a 7.5 which gives it an average of 6.1 uh so let's have a look at the nerd leaderboard and see where 6.1 puts this so this puts this at where are we 6.1 mm-hmm. this is going to put this with Thor. Yeah, it's going to go with the uh, the Jane Foster uh, Thor run. Uh, so it's going to go joint your 13th place. I can't believe the cat and the bat is beaten by <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, neither, neither can I. I think that is that is, that is dreadful. Uh, like, everyone would riot. If we, if we reviewed that again, would it go lower? Purposely, the cat yeah. and the bat. Well, no. <laughs> now that I know the score, I will lower my score, yes. <laughs> hey that's what it is it falls where it falls man and that is you know we are i think it's a mixed bag today isn't it you know i think me and yeah. phil kind of were, were really digging this and you guys down there were not really feeling the uh the love for it and uh that's why we do this you know that's why we do it's good to see what we all think and it's good to see what everybody watching thinks man that's the awesome thing of, of doing this so before we go we're already running over uh let's just have a quick whiz around and let people know what we've got going on, on our channels as usual i'm going to end it with a couple of shout outs for folks as well so phil let's go this way what's going on in phil's nerdy verse there's actually nothing going on on my channel nothing planned yet any, any kind of promotion is going to come from me i'll leave it to my pal scott you know mm. <laughs> oh, there we go all right then okay folks and uh don't worry we will tell you what we're reading next week at the end of this as well um shane what's going on over at dawner comics uh tomorrow night at 9 30 we have the premiere of dawner comics quiz night number five yeah. yes boy the return of hulk word smash because i know everyone missed it so much last time so much <laughs> oh man and for those for those watching if you want a little teaser of what to expect from shane's quiz keep watching hello and welcome to dawn of comics quiz night where i grab a bunch of geeky youtubers throw a ton of geeky questions at them through five rounds of comic based goodness to see who will be the crown or no, who would be crowned the king of all geeks? Nice. I'm gonna go because I know you're a big heroin fan. Heroin. <laughs> 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 There you go. <laughs> that was taken from the uh, the last quiz uh, from from last month. So if you like the look of that, folks, head on over tomorrow at what was the time again? Nine thirty, and there's a viewer competition to win a prize this time. Ooh. Ooh. nice man awesome there you go anything else shane um just my future state stuff every day punishing myself <laughs> okay then uh scott how about yourself buddy this weekend saturday harper state we've got episode two of comic airwaves coming out Woo-hoo! it's Woo-hoo! gonna be great uh we will be attempting to activate the competition, we need a certain amount of live viewers on the stream, and we will activate the competition via Instagram. So join in, tune in to see what you could win and how to win it. Awesome. And for yes. those that want a little taste of what you can expect, Scott, say run VT. Run VT. <laughs> this is going to be the very best video styled radio show based on comic books that you have ever seen join in get in the comments have some fun get interactive my name is scott this is the show this is comic airwaves
Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Comic Airwaves. <laughs> well, I was ready to watch the whole thing then. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's get the popcorn out, man. Let's watch yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, there you go. That's what you can expect from Comic Airwaves, folks. Uh, you want to remind people that time again? Half past eight on Saturday. There you go, folks. Half eight Saturday. Can I just note for our uh, our viewers on YouTube that I'm obviously wearing the same jumper that I, now that I was in that clip. <laughs> I do own other jumpers. <laughs> no, you don't. Stop telling lies to people. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, I don't have anything planned. You'll see me in Shane's quiz tomorrow. I'll be I'll be over there in that, um, and I'll be lo looming around in the in the chat there. Uh, but as always, I kind of want to end with some shout outs. Uh, so the uh, the first uh, person I want to shout out is Spintix. That's our man Sith Lordly. Uh, you might find him here having a lot of fun, fun, fun. Uh, so go check out Spintix. Go uh, go 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 over and check out what they're doing there. They they are crazy, man. Those guys have a really wild time over there. They they're uh, they're awesome. Uh, also go and check out uh, the Spintix crew. So you've got Sith Lordly. Go check out uh, Azora's Tiger as well, and go and check out. I'm just dropping the link in here right now for you. Go check out Sparks Comics. You'll find all of those on Spintix as well. Go over and, and say hello there. I've been having a few, uh, you know, swapping a few messages with Sif Lordly lately, and he's one hell of a nice guy, man. One hell of a cool guy. Uh, so drop him a message. Get hold of him on Instagram. He's, he's on Instagram under the same name as well. Say hi. Um, tell him we sent you. He's here. Yeah, here we go. You are more than welcome, buddy. So there you go. Go and check it out. It's on. His show is on rather late for us. I think it works out. It's on about kind of like early hours of the morning. So if you're a night owl. a.m. Yeah, is it, is it 4 a.m.? There you go. Yeah. Hey, nothing stopping you from catching what? the replay, guys. Come on, man. What? You know, we can he always is. do that. Scott's well on the day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, come in. Let's he go. is well on the day and an impromptu uh, live stream whenever you want. Just just tell him we'll go live. That's how he, that's how he ro rules, yeah. Great. There you go. All right. So that's that's what we've got going on there, folks. That's what's going to be happening for, for the folks on the screen here. So next week, let's get to next week's read. Next week, we are reading Shane's Choice. And that will be I Hate Fairyland, mm -hmm. Volume 1 from 2016, published by Image. I do believe its proper name is Madly Ever After. That's the yeah, title so of the volume. Oh, my God. This oh. is Scott Young, isn't it? We're lucky you're getting some Scott Young action here. Did he write this as well, guys? Yeah, written and drawn. Yeah. This nice. is his baby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I've got a feeling Shane's going to be fierce on this one, man. I, I've got a feeling. I, I Yeah, I, I'm going to fight you on this one. <laughs> <laughs> this I one will now. fight you. I'm going to be extra sassy now, Shane. <laughs> Wow. I am, I'm going to die on this hill. You are going to love this book. <laughs> so that's what we are doing next week. I Hate Fairyland by Image, Volume 1. And uh, it's also worth noting as well that next week, at the end of next week's episode, it will be you guys watching. It's your turn to pick what we're going to be reading for the following week. So we'll be doing it the same as we always do. Uh, we'll be asking you to shout out one recommendation each. We'll put it on a spinny wheel thing and uh, we'll pick one at random and you will win a, a you know, little prize for taking part and, and helping us out with these reviews. And you'll also get an invitation to come and join us for that episode uh, and help us you know, pick apart and, uh, and, and review that book that you've chosen as well. So there you go. That's what we're doing. That brings us to the end of episode 21. I've just realized that episode 21, that's six months we've been going. And what a great six months. Nice. Yeah. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, folks, get your waves out. <laughs>